What's up guys? Welcome back to News Wave. And yes, it's finally here, guys. This is the last News Wave before E3 officially begins. And really, it kind of begins Saturday. So that'd be tomorrow uh, with EA Play at 3 o'clock my time. That's 3 o'clock Eastern. Uh, and we're gonna I'm gonna be streaming it. It's gonna be fun. It's uh it's it's going to be interesting to see what's there, especially for FIFA uh, and any, any other games EA has there. They have a whole a ton of games apparently being shown there, including Battlefront. And I'm sure, like I said, FIFA, Madden, all these other games will be there. But it looks like it's going to be a pretty long show. So I'm sure we'll have a lot of fun there. And then, of course, Sunday we start with Microsoft from the big three. And then we move on to Sony and then Nintendo. But there is some other stuff that's been happening so far today. Again, more pre-E3 announcements that are just kind of showing up. So let's get started today, guys. Speaking of Microsoft. That actually brings us to our first bit of news, and this actually comes from Mike Yabara on Twitter, and they've been talking about Scorpio at length leading up to this event, and they should be because that is like their big flagship system that they're going to be showing at E3. That's going to take up a good chunk of their E3 conference, and they're kind of going out of their way a little more to just to make sure we know it's the most powerful system, right? That's, that's what they're telling us. Guys, it's the most powerful system ever made for your home entertainment use. And they go a little further here to say that instead of having four gigs reserved for the system and giving developers eight, they have now managed to kind of refine it and have the developers use nine gigs instead, whereas three gigs will be stuck with the system reserves. It does seem that they are interested in at least making it as powerful as possible for developers, hoping to bring probably games with them. Hope They're hoping that, uh, from what I, what I can tell here, they're hoping that developers see this and say, okay, that is the strongest system. Maybe it's the easiest one to get our game up and running on. If it's like, a, like an expansive open world game or something, I'm not sure because it's still CPU bound to that CPU, but it's still the strongest system out there. So if you want a game that looks really nice to be in 4K, you're probably gonna take it to the Scorpio. Uh, but again, every one of those games has to also run the Xbox, and that's, I think, where the problem is. But they're going out of the way to give us, to show us pictures of the chip leading up to E3. They're talking about the RAM being available to developers. They're putting a lot of this out in the public eye, I think, just to hammer home the fact that, yes, this is more powerful than the PS4 Pro, but at this point, we already know that, so we need to see some games, though, right? And that kind of leads us into our next bit of news, because Phil Spencer took to Twitter talking about how the briefing may last longer than the traditional 90 minutes. Usually they have their presentation last an hour and a half um, for all their live stuff, because live shows, like we've talked about before, do take longer than pre-recorded shows because there is a lot more going on, people walking on and off the stage, live presentations that, let's face it, can go wrong a lot. We see it happen all the time. In this case, though, they're talking about it running over the 90 minute mark for a different reason, that being that there's just too many games. In fact, Phil Spencer went to Twitter and said this. Yeah, had some games that just didn't want to leave out to hit the time, so made a call to just run a little long. So this makes me a little happier here because the one thing I, I've said about Microsoft is they need games. They have the most powerful system, that's great but you really won't make yourself different from any other system if you don't have the games. That's what's kept Nintendo relevant as long as they have without putting out a game system that would compete with the other two on a power level because they have the games. And that's what it comes down to. You can have the strongest system in the world, but if you have nothing to play on it, it's not really a system then, is it? It's just it's just a box that can do computations at a, a very rapid rate, <laughs> but with nothing to kind of point that power at. So I'm very hopeful that Microsoft has figured out a way to get a, new IPs, exclusives, any of that stuff. I hope it's not just all third-party games showing up there because those are the same games we can get on the PS4 Pro and all they're gonna do is say that, oh look, it runs in 4K, and, but then the PS4 Pro technically does as well, it just upscales it which you're not gonna explain to the everyday consumer as to, as to what that's about. But there's also a chance though, like we've been talking about, that the PS4 Pro gets dropped in price anyway. So it'll have the price advantage, it won't have the true 4K, but again, mainstream consumers, they don't understand that. Either way, I'm hopeful that Microsoft does show up and shows us some pretty cool games. We already know Crackdown 3 will, should be there. I, I have that kind of pegged as a launch title with Scorpio being a game that can kind of show what Scorpio can do in that setting. Again, it'll work on the original Xbox One, but it'll be probably it'll probably run a lot better on the Scorpio based on what they want it to be. They'll show Cuphead, I'm sure, but then I'm just hoping they show things like Sea of Thieves off more because that game looks awesome. It needs the limelight, and then just just 
some some exclusives guys come up with some new ips and put them on that system and really at that point you'll have a great console if you can do this oh and real quick guys if you did pick up mr shifty uh when it came out and there were a lot of problems at the time mostly frame rate issues there's a lot of slowdown well they have put out a patch that is supposed to help with that it's 1.03 no one has really tested it fully like how um digital foundry for example will test these check frame rates but a lot of people are reporting that the game is running smoother now with that patch so i would go check it out out if it should have been automatic um, if you have not manually downloaded it should have just automatically downloaded but you can go into your uh, system storage and check the game to make sure it is 1.03 otherwise you should be able to go to the shop and just initialize the update right away next up guys is Shenmue 3 and unfortunately it is being delayed into next year remember originally it's supposed to come out uh, this December when I saw that date though or at least that month I always look at that and go well that's probably getting pushed into next year uh, a lot of times they will tell you the last month in a year just because if they if it gets pushed to the next year they can be like oh it's only a few months but in this case they don't have any time a time frame really for when it will be released just that they are making a lot of headway here and we found out this information by way of a video from their kickstarter page where they the really cool thing about them is they do updates pretty much every month just telling them what is going on and where their kickstarter funds are going towards in this case though they said look it's going to be pushed back we're sorry but apparently the scope of the game is just becoming way bigger than what they even anticipated originally and they're hoping the fans understand that the game will be better because of this and realistically I'm fine with that. Like I said before, just make the game good. I can wait. There's enough stuff that comes out nowadays, like every week stuff is coming out, that I can pretty much distract myself until that game comes out, and then I'll be happier when I get it. I know there's a lot of people who become impatient over this stuff, and it gets to a point where, yes, yeah, some some games should come out already, like Kingdom Hearts 3, that should come out already, because it, we've been waiting for so long for this game. But a game like Shenmue 3, where obviously they're, they're putting a lot of love and time into this, I'm okay. I can wait a little bit as long as it's done well and it doesn't come out like a terrible game. And guys, if you have not played Axiom Verge and you have a Nintendo Switch, get ready because it is now coming to the Nintendo Switch as well as PS4, Vita, and Wii U. And it is an awesome game. Now, of course, you can also just go get it on Steam or, or your PC like now. But it's a really cool game. They're bringing out a physical copy of the game, which is really cool. Um, but it's going to be a little more pricey uh, on the Switch compared to other systems. I think it still has something to do with that flash memory that they're using for cartridges. This is becoming, I think, clear now uh, compared to, say, the PS4 version of this. That's 30. The Switch version will be 40. And this, of course, is the Axiom Verge Multiverse Edition. And you'll see it here. It comes with a couple different things, including a soundtrack, an art book, and a very cool looking case and box and you know what i think there's a few things going on here specifically i've talked about how there is a some kind of nand flash storage shortage that is going on and people are companies are battling it out right now i have a feeling after opening one and looking at the flash memory it's probably those are probably a part of this i have a feeling those chips are a little more expensive building these carts are just a little more expensive than say burning a disc and we've talked about this before, but no more so than now. Um, I think in time, they will come back down to normal prices, especially as flash memory starts flooding the market again. But for right now, yes, games that are physically done on the Switch will probably be $10 more than their counterparts. By the way, Axiom Verge is an awesome game. It's like a Metroidvania style game. I know a lot of people don't like that word, but it really is. It's Metroid and it's mostly Metroid. I mean, it has Castlevania elements. I guess you could say Symphony Night elements, but it's it's mostly Metroid. So if you're looking for like a, a, a quick Metroid fix and you've been waiting and waiting and waiting for a Metroid game to come out on, say, the Switch, you're still waiting. Obviously, I am. It's pretty new, but still Metroid's in a very weird place right now. If you're waiting for that, check this game out because it's, it's very similar. It's scheduled to release this August and it's worth a pickup, I think. Oh, and even though it's, it's going to be $40 physically, but Go Nintendo tweeted them, asked them what a digital price is. It's going to be the same as the other systems at $19.99. Yes, I think it's worth $20. I would get it digitally if you are a fan of the game already. Maybe take a look at the physical copy because it looks like it's actually kind of feature packed. And guys, our next bit of news is super weird. No one... And I mean, no one saw this bit of news coming, and that is that Bubsy is somehow making a return. I have no idea how this is happening. Accolade Studios, uh, it's, a, it's a studio that was around a while ago. They, they, they made up Bubsy 3D. They made Bubsy on the Super Nintendo. It was on the Genesis. It was even on the Atari Jaguar. They made up Bubsy 3D. Bubsy 3D was 
absolutely terrible. A, a lot of people on YouTube, if you go out and look, they'll do reviews on like, you know, bad games. Bubsy 3D is usually in there. In fact, a lot of people even call it like the worst PlayStation game made, which that's hard to say because there are a lot of them out there. It's not a good game. In fact, Accolade actually closed down probably because of this game uh, in 2000. And somehow they seem to rise up and return. And what's the first game they put out and they decide to kind of put their namesake on? Of course it's another Bubsy game, because why not? Maybe they're so stubborn uh, that they want Bubsy to work that they're willing to just put everything on the line for this game. And that is called Bubsy the Wooly Strike Back. They have a full trailer out for it, very quick teaser, but it does show gameplay that looks very much just like a standard platformer. Uh, and it's it's to the point where people are kind of seeing this as a joke because keep in mind guys, it's, it's 2017 and we're looking forward to games like Bubsy and Shaq Fu to come out. Yes, that's, it, it's it's crazy, right? Games really are, the trends are cyclical. It's, it's all coming back around in this case. I mean, seriously, at this point, the Sonic the Hedgehog Twitter account even got in on the action asking if it really was Bubsy to blink twice, you know, if it really is you. And it's, it's the weirdest thing. You know what? I'll, I'll give it, I guess we'll take a look at it and try it out. It looks like a typical platformer. It doesn't look like it takes any chances with that. So maybe they kind of went a little conservative with this game to put it out there. People can say, well, at least it works, unlike Bubsy 3D, which te on a tech level barely worked. And uh, it's only coming out, though, on the PS4 and Steam at this time. And that is due out sometime this fall. Uh, we'll keep an eye for a release date. I assume they wanted to get this out before it kind of got lost in the sea that is E3 at this point. Get it out now before all these festivities start because now everyone's talking about this one thing because there's not a lot else to talk about right now, but in about a week's time, we'll have a ton of stuff to talk about. And guys, the last bit of news today is, is pretty frustrating. Now, if you're a fan of, say, the Witcher series, you are completely aware of who CD Projekt Red is as a company. They are a very, very cool studio. They, they take care of their fans, I will say that. They're very cool to their fans. But, of course, sometimes even the good studios get taken advantage of by people. So in a tweet, they put out the following statement. Dear gamers, an unidentified individual or individuals have just informed us they are in possession of a few internal files belonging to CD Projekt Red. Among them are documents connected to early designs for the upcoming game Cyberpunk 2077. A demand for ransom has been made, saying that should we not comply, the files will be released to the general public. We will not be giving in to the demands of the individual or individuals that have contacted us, which might eventually lead to the files being published online. The appropriate legal authorities will be informed about the situation. The documents are old and largely unrepresentative of the current vision for the game. Still, if you're looking forward to playing Cyberpunk 2077, it would be best for you to avoid any information not coming directly from CD Projekt Red. When the time is right, you will hear about Cyberpunk 2077 from us officially. CD Projekt Red team. And this is amazing because apparently a group of people or one person seems to think this information is worth a ton to CD Projekt Red. And when they come out and say that, just like, we're not going to comply with them and they can, you know, if they're going to release it, they're going to release it. And that pretty much tells these people that what they have is pretty much worthless because it is not representative of Cyberpunk 2077. These people seem to think they like kidnapped the president's daughter or something and they're getting a massive ransom. And CD Projekt Red is like, no, you, you just, you, you kidnapped the custodian, guys. <laughs> uh, it's, it's, it's terrible, though, that there are people out there doing this. Remember, we just saw this with the Pirates of the Caribbean. Same thing, where people steal it. You have to pay us X amount of dollars, or we're going to release this online. And there's not much to gain here for these people. I, I guess they think that, that CD Projekt Red was going to be scared and pay them. I don't even want to think of how much money they were asking for. It was probably just, just way too much. But even if they paid them $1, it, it would be terrible. So I'm glad that they stood their ground and said, you know what, guys? It, it's there the files are worthless you can release them if you want but you're not getting a dime from us so good and i hope i hope a lot of these people get this message that look if you steal something like that you're going to be prosecuted they're going to find you hopefully and do that and put you in jail even because this is some there's some scummy stuff right here and i i really i really do hope they are found and brought to justice because stuff like this really guys come on you're, you're holding digital files hostage what what are you doing with your life? And that's it for News Wave today, guys. Make sure you comment, like, and subscribe. All of that good stuff. Let me think about anything we talked about today. Whether you are flabbergasted that Bubsy is somehow making a return. Yes, one of the worst games from the PS1 era is somehow coming back. I don't, I don't know how, but it is. Also, let me think about CD Projekt Red and just the the, the 
just a stupid ransom note that was sent. I wonder if they sent it to them in like cut up magazine like clippings and like glued it all on. At least maybe get some creativity out of it. And we are coming up to the first big event from the companies and that is Xbox Scorpio. Are you guys excited for actual games to be there? I know we know at this point it's the strongest system ever made according to them. They keep telling us that. But are you excited for the possibility that they might have some exclusives up their sleeve? I am. I want to see what they can come up with. Also, guys, we are going to do a full spawn cast Saturday night with several guests on, uh, talking about E3, giving our predictions, and just overall just chatting about the conference coming up. So I hope to see you guys there. That is Saturday night, this Saturday night at 9 p.m. Eastern. So come by, check us out live, guys, and I'll see you then.